told you that you could actually increase your performance just by changing what you were wearing? A study published in the Journal of Experimental Psychology showed that those that are wearing white lab coats actually perform better than those that are not wearing them. Another study also published in that same journal showed that those that are wearing professional suits are better at negotiating than those that are not wearing them. As a woman in STEM, I used a very similar strategy to boost my self-confidence and performance in what I call the spacesuit effect. I use the spacesuit effect to go from being on the verge of being kicked out of Penn State to launching to the edge of space. And I use this strategy as early as the age of two. When I was just two years old, Disney Pixar's Toy Story had come out, and I begged my parents to go see it. And when this happened, I saw Buzz Lightyear flying around the screen, and I instantly fell in love. And so, when I came home that night, I took a towel, and I wrapped it around my head with duct tape. And this was the very first time in my life that I dressed up as an astronaut. That moment planted a little seed in what would grow into my future in the space industry. Fast forward to high school, and I'm getting ready to apply for colleges. Penn State was my first choice, second choice, third choice, and then Ohio State was probably like 10. And as I'm getting ready to apply for colleges, I went to a museum near my house, and they were featuring NASA rovers. And they also had a little cardboard cutout of a NASA flight suit. And so I went in and I put my head in it, and I took this picture. And this was the second time that I dressed up as an astronaut and saw myself as one. And so when I had the chance to apply to Penn State's electrical engineering program, I was really excited because I was now going to try to follow in my dad's footsteps as a Penn State electrical engineer. And so when I got that acceptance letter, I was really excited. However, that dream of being a space ranger, just like Buzz, ended almost as quickly as it started. When I came here in my fall semester of my freshman year, I started taking my classes. I looked to my left, and I looked to my right, and I realized that I was one of only a handful of women out of hundreds of electrical engineering students. I started to think, I don't have any women professors. There's never been a woman who has walked on the moon. And so maybe this space engineering thing really isn't for people that look like me. And so I started getting detached from my classes. Each exam got harder. And I got my final grades back. And I received a 1.5 GPA. And after I received that, that meant that I was on academic probation. And if I didn't get my grades up the very next semester, I was going to be kicked out of Penn State forever. And so I thought, there goes my dream. But then I thought back to those two photos of the buzz and of that NASA flight suit. And I thought, they wouldn't give up, so I can't either. 
So I came back that spring semester, and I did two things differently this time to bring my grades back up. The first one was, I joined the Society of Women Engineers. And what that did was give me someone to look up to. I was seeing other engineering students that were getting full-time jobs and getting internships. And if they could do it, so could I. The other change that I made was I thought back to the self-confidence I had when I wore the Buzz Lightyear astronaut helmet and when I wore that NASA flight suit. And so I used that again every single exam. 30 minutes before every exam that I took that semester, I put my favorite outfit on. And what that did was give me just a little boost of confidence so that I could walk into every exam feeling good about it. And that extra confidence boost gave me just enough so that I could get off of academic probation and continue as a Penn State student. But my challenge wasn't over, because I had another one waiting for me my sophomore year. I got here again in the fall of my sophomore year, and I'm getting ready for the dreaded career fair. I print out my resume for the career fair, and I look at the top, and it says a 2.3 cumulative GPA. And I realize, who is going to give an internship to a sophomore with limited experience and a 2.3 GPA? Why even walk miles across campus to the Bryce Jordan Center when nobody's going to hire me? But I push those negative thoughts aside. And I put on my interview outfit, and I felt confident. And I walked into the Bryce Jordan Center up to every single one of the recruiters. And I said, yes, recruiter, that is a 2.3 but it was a 1.5 last semester. <laughs> and so I, I learned from failure, and I can improve when I make a mistake, and I can take this to your company. Despite having a 2.3, being a sophomore, and having limited experience, I received an electrical engineering internship for my sophomore year, 15 minutes from my parents' house. And there was another challenge waiting for me there. Two weeks into my first internship, I was wearing one of my favorite pencil skirts. And there was a pen that I dropped on the floor. And I bent over to pick up the pen and shh, my skirt ripped all the way up. And so I grabbed my stapler and my notebook, and I waddled to the bathroom. And as I'm on my way, I think to myself, I really hope there's somebody in here to help me. And when I get there, I look in the first stall. I look in the second stall. I look in the third stall. And I realize there's no one in here to help me. And not only is there no women in the restroom, there are no women that I could think of on this entire floor. And so I started to feel pretty alone. And I call my mom and I say, Mom, I, I need you to bring me a pair of pants. I'm having a fashion emergency. So I stapled my skirt in the bathroom by myself. And I meet my mom. I get my pants. 
And I go back to my computer. And I think, there has to be women that work here. I can't be the only one. And I find this internal group called Women in Nuclear. And I also find out that there's a national organization called Women in Nuclear that promotes the professional development of women in STEM. And I find out that they have a national conference coming up and a student sponsorship program. And so I applied. And I attended their national conference and I was surrounded by 500 women in STEM that I could look up to, that I could see myself as in the future. And I shared my story about the 1.5, about my skirt ripping, about feeling like I was alone. And I, at that conference, networked my way to a winter and a summer of my junior year internships. Now knowing that I had three internships under my belt before my senior year, I was now able to focus on my grades. Every single exam, I continued to use the spacesuit effect, wearing my favorite outfit, feeling my best, so that I could be the most confident I can every single exam. And for the very first time, I got on Dean's List. And now that my grades were higher, I could apply for the jobs that I really wanted, which were in the space industry. I graduated and started my first full-time job at a top aerospace defense contractor as a space engineer. And since then, I have designed electronics for NASA's Artemis program, which will be sending the very first woman to the moon in 2025. My grades were also high enough that I could pursue an engineering master's so that I now am eligible for NASA's astronaut program. I have also completed the IIAS scientist astronaut program. And this, this is my final spacesuit. Because wearing this suit means that next year I will be launching to the edge of space. And I can finally become a space ranger. So if you're dealing with something, or maybe you feel like you don't fit in, or maybe you have a thermodynamics exam coming up, <laughs> know that you're not alone, and it's going to be OK. And I challenge you to find your own spacesuit effect. And I will see you all on the moon. Thank you.